Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at binomial probability distributions. And if you haven't already done so, you want to make sure you watch the previous video that we talked about with Lesson 10.5, where we learned about binomial probabilities. Because if you haven't watched that video, if you don't understand binomial probabilities, a lot of what we're going to be doing today will not make sense to you. So make sure you watch that video first before moving on to this one. But if you're ready to watch this video, let's go ahead and start by talking about the fact that in that previous video, we looked at that formula, where to find the binomial probability, we took n choose k times uh, the probability of a success. We use a p to represent the probability of, excess, of a success raised to the k power. Now remember, q represented the probability of a failure. Well, we could also look at the probability of a fail failure as being 1 minus the probability of a success, success p. And the exponent for that would have been n minus k. Now this lesson, we're going to look at the exact same formula. It's just that, for technicality purposes, we're going to be using x instead of k. But otherwise, it's the same exact formula. So let's look at an example where we're going to be taking and graphing a probability distribution. And, and then later in this lesson, we're going to be looking at a website that will be doing some of the graphing for us so we can draw out from that some patterns that are important to recognize when we look at the graph of a probability distribution. So let's look at that example now. So in this example, it says, assume that the probability of an on-time arrival of any flight is 75% and that different trips are independent of one another. Determine and graph the probability distribution for the number of on-time arrivals in eight trips. So for this problem, using what we've talked about in the past, we're going to use to figure out the probability that no flights show up on time. It would be 8 choose 0 times 0.75 to the 0 power. Now, the probability of them not arriving on time then would be 25% of the time, so it would be 0.25 to the 8th power. Now, if you do that on your calculator, I'll just tell you what your answers would be. Your answer is going to be 0 .000, so a decimal followed by four zeros and a two, approximately. And we would continue to do this for all of them. So we would do 8 choose 1 times 0.75 to the first power times 0.25 to the seventh power. And when you do that, you get 0 .0037. And we would continue that same process until we got to the end. The end would be 8 choose 8 times 0.75 to the 8th power times 0.25 to the 0 power, which when you do that, when you, do that you get 0 0.1001. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to complete this table and fill in that information, and then we're going to graph it. So again, if you did these on your calculator, these are the numbers that you'd get for each of these different uh, probabilities. And by the way, this table I forgot to put in here, this would be x in that formula. And we can use B of X, or we could use any letter to represent the uh, values here. And so then we would have had 0 0.00037. Here we'd have 0 0.00385. Here we'd have 0 0.02307. 0 0.0865. 0 0.2. Whoops. 0.076. 0.3115, 0 0.267, and 0 0.1001. And again, these could all be found on your own by plugging these numbers into your calculator. You want to make sure you do know how to do that and find those values. Um, so make sure, again, that is part of the previous lesson, though. So you want to make sure you try to understand how to do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this information into a graph. Now when we create a graph, it's important to label our information. So here's how I do this. I look at my values for y that we would graph along the y-axis. We call that b of x. And I look at those values, and I can see that the largest number is 0 0.31. So I want to go up to at least 0 0.3. So for a lot of these, what's going to make sense is counting by 0 0.05. So then that way we get a good description of our data. So you can see that by counting by 0 0.05, so 5 hundredths, uh, we would have enough uh, space here to be able to have this data spread out nicely. And along our x-axis, what we're, we're, we're going to do is we're going to put bars. And since I have a large enough graph here, 
what we'll do is we'll have our bars be two square lengths. So they fit in perfectly here. So now let's just draw the graphs. So let's look at the first one. The first one, point when x is 0, our value is 0 0.0002. Well, that's pretty much nothing. Same thing with the next one is pretty much nothing. Same thing with the next one. It's not until we get to where x is 3 and we get 0 0.02 that we can have something to graph. Because 0 0.02 would be just under halfway. We can go ahead and shade that in. And when x is 4, we have 0 0.0865. We can round that to 0 0.09, which is just shy of 0.1. I can shade that in a little bit there. And then when x is 5, we get about 0.2. And then when, when x is 6, we have 0.3115. So again, that's going to be about 0.3. Oops, that's a little bit too high, maybe. Not good enough. And next, we would have 7 is 0 0.267, or 0 0.27, so just under 0 0.3. It's just a little over halfway, actually, between 0 0.25 and 0 0.3. And lastly... When x is 8, our value is 0 0.1, basically. So we would have the last bar going up to 0.1. So that is what the graph of this distribution would look like. And it's important to be able to do this by hand. And by the way, we should call this down here x. So it's important to recognize, too, that the parts to include in a graph is we need to label the axes here as far as this would be our x, this would be our b of x, and have proper skills for both the x and the y axis there. Now, there's a website that we're going to be using now. So what you want to do is you want to open up another window. And I've created a tiny URL here for you to make this a lot easier. So in a new uh, tab, type in that uh, website to be able to access what we're going to be using. And you might want to, if you don't have my notes printed out, you might want to pause this and write down so these first two steps here so you know what to do when you go to that website. And then we're going to talk about, well, what are some of the changes that, what is the effect that the probability has on the shape of the graph? So what if the probability of success changes? So how does the probability affect the shape of the graph? So let's go to that website now. So this is what it looks like. So we're going to set the number of trials to be 8. So go up here and change that to 8. And now we're going to change, what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this other slider. This is, the other slider represents the probability of a success. Right now it's at 0.5. But I'm going to slowly drag that to the left and to the right. And watch what's happening to that graph. And you could be doing the same. Now here's some facts that we can draw out from watching the shape of that graph move. We could say that P affects whether the dis distribution is skewed. Remember, skewed means that it's leaning more of one direction or the other. Or if it's symmetrical. Because we see that the graph is symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical, when the probability of the success is at 0.5. So we can see that that is when the graph is perfectly symmetrical. Now when we drag it over to the left, we would say it's skewed left. Or to the right, it's skewed right. It looks like maybe sometimes that it's symmetrical, but remember it's leaned more to the right, so that is not symmetrical. It's only symmetrical when P is exactly 0.5. Some other information that we could gather from this is that as the value of P increases, the distribution's mode shifts from left to right.
Or we could also say that the mode is increasing. Now the mode is going to be the one that's the most. Right now my mode is 4. So if I increase that to the right, now my mode is 7, because that's the one that's the largest. So as the larger that P gets, your mode is also increasing, where the mode is moving from left to right. And we can also see, say that as the value P increases, the mean also increases. Where do we find the mean at? If we look down here, here's the mean. So again, if I start over here, here we have a smaller mean. Now watch what happens. As we drag it to the right, my value for the mean is increasing. Let's do this next activity. This time I want you guys to do most of this on your own. So do steps 1 through 4. So this time set, set your value for P to be at 0.5. And then I want you to drag the slider around to change the number of trials and watch the changes of the graph. And specifically, do 3 and 4, where it says find the mean, again, that's listed below the graph, when your value for n is 2, 6, 10, and 100, and see what you find. And then look to see when is the graph symmetric, for what value is it symmetric at when n is 2, 6, 10, and 100, and write down what you found. And then we'll, look, we'll come back together and we'll answer number 5. Um, but otherwise, I want you guys to do one through steps one through four on your own. So why don't you guys pause the video, go back to that website, and play around with it and answer these two questions, questions three and four. So, pause, uh, so hit play when you're ready to check to see if you ha made the right assumptions. Okay, let's see what you found here. So for step three, when it says find the mean when n is 2, 6, 10, and 100, what you should have found is that the mean for when n is 2, the mean was 1. When n was 6, the mean was 3. When n was 10, the mean was 5. And when n was 100, the mean was 50. So what you should have found here is the mean is always going to be half the number of trials, half of n. Now in step 4, it says find the value where the graph is symmetric when n is 2, 6, 10, and 100. And you should have found the same exact thing, that the graph is also symmetric at half of n, or where n is divided by 2. And some other things that you might notice is that as n increases, the graph is actually spreading out, and the graph is also flattening out. So the more data, the more trials, the larger that n becomes, the more spread out the data is going to become, and the more it's going to end up flattening out. So that is some information about the some properties as far as uh, the graphs of a probability distribution, a binomial probability distribution. So it's important, again, to make sure you understand how the number of trials affects the shape of the graph, and in the previous piece, how the probability affects the shape of the graph. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.